start today, uh, and uh, we're going to pick up where we left off. We're still in the last day's series, and today we're at adamabeliever.com forward slash last days 4.pdf. We're going to be talking about the healing remedy, the remedy for healing. We got a lot of people sick, a lot of people sick, coronavirus, COVID-19, a lot of people are being listed as succumbing to this particular illness. And a lot of people are fearful. A lot of people are fearful. And when you just walk outside, you see people in masks. You see people driving in the car with a mask on. I saw, but uh, people got masks. I saw one person had a mask on the car so that the, it, it won't blow in the vents in the front. People, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. So people are, you know, they're, they're afraid. That's, that's just a sign of fear. They're afraid. Uh, and, of course, like I talked about last week, if you sit, fall asleep with CNN on, you're going to wake up with a mask on. You, you know I got on there. But, uh, yeah, so, but God has not given us as believers the spirit of fear. Okay? God has not given us the spirit of fear. What makes us fearful, and we're going to talk about this, but what makes us fearful is how close we are to God. You know, the closer you are to God, the less fearful you are. Remember when you were young and, you know, I, I know a lot of people growing up without fathers now, but back in my day when we was young, most people had their fathers. And, you know, my father was tall. He was like six foot two. So, I mean, if I was walking with my dad, I wasn't scared of anything. Because my dad, I felt, was tall enough and big enough to just handle anybody. So I was never worried. I, he would have to tell me, like, if... If he saw a situation that didn't look kosher or saw it that looked dangerous, get in the car, you know, or, or, or get behind me or something. He would have to tell me because I'm walking with all confidence, knowing it ain't going to happen to me if I'm with my daddy. Right. And that's the way we are with the Lord. The closer we are to the Lord, we're not worried about coronavirus or COVID or anything like that. We, we, we're not even worried about it if we stay close to the Lord. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I know a lot of people, um, you know, are celebrating Easter, resurrection, whatever they, you know, are celebrating. But I'm, I'm, ta I'm talking about the healing remedy today, okay? So some of y'all, you don't, don't be disappointed because you didn't get a good Friday, a good Saturday, or a, a resurrection Sunday message because I'm talking about the last days. We in the last days, amen? So uh, we're going to be talking about the healing remedy today. Uh, Luke 21 and 25. Now, this is the same Olivet Discourse that we've been in in Matthew, Matthew chapter 24. This is just Luke's uh, take on it, um, but it's the same uh, scenarios, just kind of some of it may be expounded on a little more by Luke in some cases, and in some cases, Mark and Matthew may expound. But uh, today, because of the nature of what we're talking about, we're going to take Luke's uh, take on it starting at Luke 21 and 25. And speaking of the times, the end times, the times of Jesus' return, the times of uh, Christ's return drawing near, he says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, okay? And we've been having a lot of these. We've been having signs in the sun. The sun is definitely closer. <laughs> we, we have signs in the sun. The sun is definitely hotter. Our weather is all out of sorts totally. Like our weather, and it's not just Texas, our weather is just crazy. And people aren't paying attention to it, but I remember grandmama and granddaddy used to always tell us, you know when the end is coming because the weather is going to be off. They're going to start manipulating the weather. They'll know how to make it rain and do these kind of things. And man, when we were young, we thought that was so far-fetched. And now we know they have machines to change the weather when they want to change it. So we already got the signs in the sun. We have the moon. We have the blood moon. We have the different uh, moon cycles that are happening now. Uh, I remember just a few years back, there was something on the back side of the moon that, was, that they were, you know, uh, trying to explain. It was just, you know, something that was weird. So we got signs in the moon and in the stars. And upon the earth, distress of nations. America is in distress right now. So we have distress of nations, and it's not just America, it's all over the world. Nations are in distress with perplexity. That means we don't know what is going on. People don't know. The government can't explain it. 
They don't know. They think they know, but people don't really know what is going on. So we got the earth in distress, and then we have perplexity. The sea and the waves roaring. And then 26 tells us, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. This is a lot of what we are seeing even now. People's hearts failing them. Their health failing them because of fear of these things that are coming. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, so when all of these signs and these different things begin to line up, he tells us, then look up and lift up your heads. In other words, don't be afraid. Don't be down. Don't be worried. Lift up your head because it's good news. It means that your redemption draweth nigh. Okay? So we're going to talk about some things uh, in this. And I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to talk about this first and then I'm going to explain where it's coming from. But the first thing we're going to talk about here is God's voice. So if you are a believer, in this time, you need to know God's voice. God allows us to be put in various scenarios so that we will listen for his voice. Somebody told me the other day, well, they, no, they didn't. They, they sent me a shot of the uh, aisles in the store where the Bibles normally are. And there was not one Bible on the shelf completely sold out of Bibles. Why? Because people have been put in a scenario where they need to listen for his voice. So people are buying up the Bibles. He is using times of calamity and adversity to teach us how to wait on him. God knows how to make you wait on him, and he knows how to make you listen for his voice. So when coronavirus and COVID and these things start happening, folks get scared and go buy up some Bibles and try to connect with God in a way that they have never connected with him before. Oh, Lord, you know, they become the well and deacon when the corona jumps off. I believe this COVID-19 crisis is being used by God in spite of its origin its purpose, or its controversies. So I don't, you know, it doesn't matter to me how it got here, who made it, whether it was a monkey and a snake and a, a toad and a whatever they're saying it is, who some bit somebody, I don't know, whether it's 5G, whatever it is, I'm saying that the crisis, with the, the, the entire crisis is being used by God. In spite of all of that, God will get the glory. Amen? So he's got his people on their knees. He's got people reconnecting. He has people that have never connected with him before. He has people reaching for him, looking for him, searching for answers through him. So I believe that this crisis is being used in spite of its origin. This is a good saying. Don't ignore the signs you ask God to show you. <laughs> Many of us have been thinking and contemplating getting a closer relationship with the Lord but things were going so well for us and our time was so limited that we failed to do what our heart promised him. Thought came into your heart just last year, came into your mind. Just, I mean, just last year came into your mind. Man, I need to start, you know, meeting with the Lord in the mornings. I need to begin to, you know, write in a journal and read and speak to the Lord on a regular basis. I need to start a prayer where I keep a certain time of prayer and I... Yeah, you said that a year ago, and uh, you didn't have time for it, or things were going pretty good. Oh, you know, I'm going to start that. I'm going to start it. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And you never did it. Oh, but the COVID-19 came, and you remembered all of those things you promised. <laughs> God speaks through his word, and he speaks through our circumstances. Just like the children of Israel, God allows circumstances to get us in the posture he needs for the times we are 
in. And this is where I'm taking most of what I'm talking about today. This particular story, this is a powerful story in the Old Testament after Moses had taken the children of Israel away from Pharaoh and brought them out into uh, Mara, into the desert. The Bible tells us in Exodus 15 and 23, and when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. So for three days, they could not drink the waters here. So God brought them to a place where there was no water. So of course, what did the people, what did the children of Israel do? They do what they always did back then. The people murmured against Moses saying, what shall we drink? You done brought us out here and now we don't have anything to drink. In Pharaoh's house, we had something to drink. And he cried unto the Lord and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet or purified. There he made for them a statute, which is a rule, and an ordinance. And there he proved them, and this is what he told them. And this is the important part. This is where our whole message today is coming from. If thou will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ears to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that does what? Healeth thee. So if you want to stay healthy and healed, I need you to do some things. This is what the Lord is saying. And nothing has changed. I don't understand, folks, well, that's the Old Testament. That's under the law. No, 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 no. These are commandments of God if you want to stay healed. Right here. He said, (laughs) you got to hearken to the voice of the Lord. You got to do that which is right in his sight. You have to give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes. And then he will put none of these diseases. This is, I don't understand why people want something separate from what the world has. You want grace, you want power, you want anointing, you want healing, you want something that the world doesn't have from God, but you're behaving like the world unto God. How do you expect something different if you're not doing anything different? How do you expect something different if you aren't different? This is where we are as a people, and this is why we need a message just like this. So we're going to take something he said in there. Do what is right in his sight. The only way the world can have hope is if they turn to Christ. But if we are not living up to God's standards of holiness, then we are not giving them hope. So the world doesn't have hope watching us not live up to God's standards. It's our change that changes the world. Does that make sense? The hope in Christ is the change that he makes in us. When we accept him, it should change the way we behave and treat others. Your behavior is not different if it doesn't change the way you treat others. That's how you, that's how we know that you've been changed. When you weren't saved, you was uh, just a walking honey badger, mad all the time just arguing and fussing, just every, every opportunity. So when you get saved, you can't act like that. You can't be a cantankerous mess and be saved. Something needs to change. How are you going to win anybody to Christ arguing all the time? So there has to be a change because that change brings hope in others to change. But if you just like others, others don't see a change in you. They don't see change. Does that make sense? Because so many in the church are gossiping, clamoring, tearing down and destroying, the hope of peace and joy in Christ is not being shown through God's people. And I, you know, and I understand people have church hurt, so they leave churches because they don't want to be around a bunch of folks with pruned faces and look like they just got the bad mouth. And even when they smile, hey, are you happy? Yeah, I'm happy. 
Now, I hate to see sad. I mean, what? just got the, the, the look like a piranha. But she, because they always got, always tearing out, always, you know, just, just, that's not showing the peace and joy of Christ. The hope of peace and joy in Christ is not being shown when something's always wrong with you. Why would anybody, and, and you know, and this is the thing, people say, well, you know, the Holy Ghost is not moving like it used to, and the church used to have power, and the man of God used to could just lay just, yeah, it's a whole lot of useless. But let me tell you what happened. Offenses got in people's hearts, and the Spirit of God is not moving because them folks won't move stuff out of their hearts. Where is the Spirit of God going to operate if your heart is filled with malice towards somebody? The very person sitting on your row you hate because they dress better than you. And you wondering why they dressing so good and then I got to look like this. I mean, come on. <laughs> you mad. You mad. I know folk mad at the church because they couldn't even find a husband in the church. Oh, I'm mad. They, they mad at the pastor because they couldn't, they didn't get selected. Well, then you better get mad at the at the, the grocery store clerk and the dude at the laundromat because you go there all the time and ain't no man got you there either. Get mad at the mall manager, the mall cop. You walk the whole mall, all them stores, and ain't no man said your name. Mad at the preacher. Oh, he hooked people up, but he didn't find me nobody. How do we expect God to bless us and heal us if we are wishing harm and destruction upon one another? We must do what is right in God's sight in order for him to keep us in these times. Listen to what I'm saying. God will not let me rest on this. I mean, this is you know, I know I shot the video, Why Am I Here? And that's a very powerful video. You need to get it because in it, I deal with the ministry of reconciliation and how to reconcile and get things right, those kind of things. But it's just so important for us to understand that in these end times, the Bible told us what would be in the hearts of men. Many will be offended. They will begin to betray one another. They will begin to hate one another. And it was talking about the church. They will hate People in the church so much that they will team them up with the world and sinners to try to take church folks out. That's the hatred that we're dealing with in the end time because it's the same hatred that they were dealing with. It was the religious leaders that teamed up with the government to destroy or to fight against the apostles and the disciples of Jesus Christ. So we have to understand the times that we are in. These things, while you are in your home, while you are confined to your home, this is what you work on. You work on your heart the way you feel about other people and let God bring forgiveness in there because we got to do what is right in God's sight in order for him to keep us in these times. You can't pray for a blessing with hatred in your heart. And you sure can't pray for healing. No wonder you're so afraid of COVID. You got three masks on trying to stop it. And it's because... You got stuff on your heart and you aren't sure that God is with you. You aren't sure that your prayers are going to work. You aren't sure that, that you're going to be healed. Folks want to be healed so they can live longer, but they harbor so much hatred and malice in their heart, it makes no sense for God to sustain them to do more evil. Why is God keeping you alive? Oh, Lord, heal me. Heal me. When you are, it's better you're going to go now, you might go to heaven. The longer you live, the worse you're getting. I don't understand why you praying long life shall be unto me. Why are you praying for long life and everybody hates you? Good gracious. Ephesians 4 and 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace Unto who? Unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Listen to this. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. It's hard to believe people 
still have all of this bitterness in their hearts. Why this COVID thing? We don't know what's going to happen from day to day. You don't know what's going to happen. You're going to... Folks don't know if they're going to have a job. They don't know if they're going to have money. They don't know if we're going to all be under martial law. You don't know if all of our freedoms are going to be taken away. You don't know if we're going to be dragged into the streets because we are naming the name of Jesus. You don't know any of this and you still have bitterness? That's the time we're in. That's why he said, be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Another thing that he told the children of Israel is you got to give the children of Israel. He said you have to give ear to his commandments. And I know the Sabbath keepers and those that will just hold to the 10 and and forget the other 600 or, you know, they just believe that we need to hold to those. I know they have a different take on this, but let's talk about these because I believe Jesus summed up the entire law. The Bible tells us the entire law can be summed up with the commandment to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and to love thy neighbor as thyself. Sum the entire law up with those. We must give ear to this in order to be pleasing to God, to the God that heals us. If you want to be healed, you need to love the Lord thy God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. You can't pray for healing and then hope somebody else is sick. There is no healing. You can't pray for healing for your children when you wish someone else's children dead. Can't pray for healing for your wife when you wish some other woman dead. Can't pray for healing for your husband when you wish bad things on another man. So we must give ear to this in order to be pleasing to God, to the God that heals us. Y'all gonna let me just teach basic holiness today because that's what I am, a holiness preacher. Basically, the commandment means to love God with every part of your being. That's what he's saying. Every part of you. This means that even the hidden places that no one knows about. Who, me? Oh, I don't have no yet. Hush. The hidden places that nobody knows about. God wants that too. He wants every place. The one that no one knows about, it belongs to him. And he desires for us to trust him enough to expose ourselves to him. You know, when you come before God trying to hide something or come before God thinking you are something, do you know you insult him? Because he's God of everything. So he knows you. How do you not, how does a person not come clean to God? That makes no sense. But that's people in their own arrogance think they can come to God and pray. Yes, Lord, I love you. Then get up from God and go hate somebody. That's blind arrogance. That makes no sense. That same God is watching you and knows you. And he desires for us to trust him enough to expose ourselves completely to him. I hope y'all enjoying this because this is good to me. Loving your neighbor as yourself means to live free from sin. I know somebody's like, now, how did you weave those together? Yeah, loving your neighbor as yourself means to live free from sin. There is no way to sin without it affecting someone else. So we must live our best to not harm others. There is not a sin you can commit that does not affect someone else. I know somebody's saying, well, you don't know me. I can do it. See, you <laughs> yeah, there's somebody in your life There's somebody that should have been in your life that's not in your life because of that. But there is no way to sin without it affecting someone else. So we must live our best to not harm others. In order to be forgiven, we must forgive. Unforgiveness is the greatest sin we can commit against others because the penalty of it is being rejected by God. We must obey his commandments in order to reap the benefits of serving him. How do you reap the benefits of being in Christ if you're not doing what Christ says? How do you reap the benefits of being a Christian if your life is not Christ-like? I don't understand. You don't spray him on like cologne so you can smell better. We're talking about a change that actually has to take place in your behavior and your actions. Amen? 
Galatians 5 and 13. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. You've been liberated. Only use not liberty. Don't use your liberty for an occasion to the flesh. Don't think you are free, that free to where you can do whatever you want. But you, you, you're free so that you can love and serve one another. So by love, you serve one another. So it says, only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. He even shortens it even more, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Because if you can do that, you're doing what Christ did. He loved you like he loves himself by giving his life for you in your place. So thou can love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. I'm going to tell you, it's just crazy. Like people give me their testimonies or not even testimonies. They just tell me what's going on in their lives. I'm trying to counsel, try to help them. And they tell me, yeah, I said, I'm, I'm just thinking, about, you, you said that to your father? You said that to your mother? You said that to your wife and your husband? Oh, yeah, we, we just talk like that to each other. You old ugly monster. I hate you, you big demon. You the demon, you monster. I should have never married you. I wish you were dead. I wish you were dead. You dead, dead, dead. I mean, and then at night, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. We both said some things that we should not have said. I mean, I would never stop being that monster you call me. Every time I look in the mirror to comb my, to, 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 to cut my hair, I'm looking, I'm, I'm cutting my hair thinking, <laughs> am, I, am I an ugly monster? I mean, how do you just see right? The Bible is telling us if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you be not consumed. You're going to mess each other up like this. This I say then, walk in the spirit and you won't be fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Now, the reason why people fulfill the lust of the flesh is because that's all they sow to. They wake up in the morning, turn on TV, get in the car, turn on some music they shouldn't be listening to. Oh, and then we're going to watch a movie tonight. Then the movie, everybody gets killed, including the director, the producer, the, the, even the script boy. They chasing him with an ax. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 and that's, that's, that's the day for them. That, that, that's their day. Everybody get killed. The people watching it. In the theater, folk get killed. For every, everybody got killed. <laughs> and that, that's, but that's their day. Constantly, constantly sowing to the flesh. <laughs> but the Bible says if you walk in the spirit, won't you wake up in the morning and put a Bible in front of you? Read the Bible. Won't you fall asleep listening to the Bible? And don't buy the Barry White version. No, I like the way Barry read the Bible. Oh, yeah. Then the Lord. <laughs> don't, don't get the audio Bible from the dollar store. Go to get a, get a real <laughs> Okay, it's just getting ignorant now. For the flesh lusted against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. So this is somebody's. <laughs> so Galatians 5 and 17. For the flesh lusted, lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that you cannot do the things you would. So you have to sow to the spirit if you want the spirit to be stronger. And this is what happens when we get saved. That's the change you make. The change you make when you come to Christ and accept Christ is now I'm going to build up the spiritual man. I'm going to build up the regenerated man. I'm going to prove that I'm saved. See, here's the issue. And I get email after email and correspondence and people. How do I know I'm saved? How do I really know? How do I know God is really forgiving me? How do I really know? How do I know God has forgotten my past? My past keeps coming up in my head. It keeps coming up. I keep thinking of that. You have to sow to the spirit. You got to put something better in there than what you had before. That's the issue. That's the issue. You can't just go up and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and go home and think all is going to be what you have to sow into the spirit because the flesh is going to always lust against the spirit. So whichever one is stronger 
is going to win. And then he told the children of Israel, you need to keep all his statutes. All of his statutes are his rules. These are God's rules. I love this. Repentance doesn't mean anything if you keep doing what you're sorry for. It just means you're sorry. Sorry is not repentance. Sorry just means you wish you hadn't done it, but it doesn't mean you're going to stop doing it. Repentance means you're going to stop doing it. There, the no rules, no religion era of believers today is crippling us as a body. There is no biblical evidence to support the belief that we can live in sin and the blessings of God. Now, I'm not saying folks aren't going to heaven. I'm not saying, but, but if the, the blessings of God and sin don't mix. Okay, so if you live in sin, you're going to suffer the consequences of the enemy because sin is in his camp, not God's. Right. So there's no Bible to even support that you're going to live in sin and the blessings of God simultaneously. God has rules and we must obey them. See, here's the problem. This is why folks don't want rules. Folks don't want rules. Oh, rules that legalism. You be it like the Pharisees. and you just, That's a pharmaceutical thing. You just, why don't you learn your word for the day? Okay. But they, 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 they talk like that because they didn't grow up with any kind of authority. That is the issue with fatherlessness. People don't know how to respond to an authority or an authoritative figure. That's why this generation wants to do away with the church totally. When we were younger, we understood the church. We understood the pastor and his authority because we grew up with it in our homes. So we understood how to respond to male authority because when we went to the school, there were as many male teachers as there were female teachers. And there were all male principals. So anyone in authority in the school was a male when I was growing up. So we understood it. All the coaches of all the teams were men. So we understood it. Even the janitor was a man. Okay? And, you know, so we learned this by watching men in authority, watching men, you know, tell us what to do. We didn't have a problem when we went to a church. And I'm not saying a pastor just going to tell people what to do, but we didn't have a problem with a pastor in an authoritative position and trusting his leadership because we grew up understanding male leadership. But in a generation where that's not present and everybody's raised by women and all the men are considered deadbeat or weak or whack or whatever the case, um, then it's hard for them to understand when a man comes to them to correct them. They've even told me, man, if you was a woman, I would have listened to you. That guys tell me that. Yeah, and then if you're too strong in front of them, they fall in love with you. And to get them out your life, you got to break up with them like a, like a wife. It's crazy. They latch on to you like in love, and they just act like an old, jilted girlfriend. And that's because they don't understand male authority. And that's what the devil is doing in this last hour. He's just confusing all of those things. And so people that don't understand male authority, they can't relate to God. They can't obey God's rules. They can't relate to the fact that God has rules. They want God to have no rules. They don't want religion. They don't want rules. But God has them. And you got to adhere to them or you're going to have a rough time in this life. God has rules and we must obey them. Although there is grace for our errors and shortcomings, true repentance means that we turn from it and forsake those sins for the cause of Christ. Christ paid the penalty for our sin, but he does not repent for us. Did you hear that? Christ paid the penalty for your sin, but he doesn't repent for you. You have to repent. We have to repent and turn from all of our sins. Oh, this is good stuff. People on earth hate to hear the word repent, but those in hell wish they could hear it just once more. Keeping his statutes is a part of being in his good graces. You know, and when I say that about hell, folks have gotten so popcorn and cotton candy about the gospel, they don't even believe in hell anymore. They don't even think about it. Oh, that's just unthinkable that a God, a loving God would put somebody in hell. A loving God is not putting anybody in hell. A hating person puts himself in hell. God has given you every opportunity to miss hell. 
See, they don't understand that because they didn't grow up with those kind of rules. A lot of times, and this isn't all women, but most women, because you're emotional or whatever, a child can ride you down. He can ride you down. I mean, come on, y'all. It's a, well, see, there he, just let this be real. He can ride a woman down. That's what the child does. He goes to the mom. If there's a mother and a father there, he go to the mama, try to ride him down. And then the daddy will come and say, nope, 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 not doing that. And then it's just over. You see what I'm saying? That's just the authority. They've done psychological tests that show that even the male's voice does that. Okay, so don't, don't, don't come at me with no foolishness. I'm telling you. That, and that's how God is. But because people don't, you know, weren't raised with that kind of authority or whatever, they don't believe that they're, oh, no, no, God going to give us another chance. They believe Jesus going to come back three or four times. I mean, how many times is he coming back? How many times is it going to be it? No, you better understand the authority of God when God says it's final, it's final. That's why you're hearing this message right now. So you can make the decision to choose him and forsake your sin. Keeping his statutes is a part of being in his good graces. The children of Israel were chosen people. And yet he did not allow those that disobeyed him to see the promised land. These are the chosen people. And that included Moses himself. Moses didn't go. God is gracious and gives us grace for a period. But if we do not take heed, then we will only bring harm to ourselves and our bodies. First John 3 and 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous. Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. No one born of God makes a practice of sinning, for God's seed abides in him, and he cannot keep on sinning. At some point, he's going to have to come to himself if the seed is in him, because he has been born of God. By this, it is evident. This is how we know who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Y'all, Are y'all reading this? Do you hear this? This is how we know who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one that what? Does not love his brother. Summary. Oh, this was good. Many today are living in fear of catching a virus and dying. Many are dying from just the fear of believing they have it. When they get possible symptoms of it, they panic and fear sets in. This fear can cause them to succumb to whatever ailment they already had. Add to that an unhealthy lifestyle. And in some cases, secret sins or hidden emotional stress and strain. And you have a cocktail of issues that can cause a person's heart, like the Bible said what happened in the last days, a person's heart to fail them. This is the main reason God commands that we follow his way and not the way of the world. God's way leads to peace and contentment so our heart won't be overwhelmed with the cares and drama of our misguided lives. When we forsake sin and live for him, we keep our hearts clean and free from the heaviness of guilt, shame, and regret. When our hearts are full of emotional stress, then we lack the faith we need to be healed from diseases or ailments that attack us. This is what's happening, y'all. People's hearts weren't prepared spiritually. They weren't prepared. It was full of emotional stress, emotional baggage, hatred, malice, all these things. So when diseases and ailments come and attack them, they can't survive it. This is why it's so important for us to follow God's way in this hour. If we live right and trust God, we will live by faith and rebuke fear and disease, regardless of the covert plans of the elite that may be harmful to our health. We can cast down the plans of the enemy and know that we are among those that God is keeping because we are keeping his statutes. Hearken to the voice of the Lord in this hour and live right before him. Don't allow anything or anyone to cause you to fall below God's standard for you. Hebrews 12 and 9, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, our earthly fathers, which correct us. This is exactly what I just talked about. We, and the lack of this just messed this whole 
verse up. People just don't understand it. But furthermore, we had fathers of our flesh that corrected us, and we gave them reverence for that correction. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days, our earthly father chastens us after their own pleasure with what they want us to do. But he, God, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. He's correcting us so that we can be partakers. We can share his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but it's grievous. This message right here is grievous. It's hurting you. I know because it's going against what you want to do. So chastening. I mean, nobody grabs the belt, lays down and said, Daddy, I just feel just out of the blue. I just feel like getting a whipping. Nobody does that. No, you running and hiding like I used to do. I used to try to tire him out. I know he'd been at work all day, so if I run him a few times around the house, he ain't going to have much left in the tank and go light on that beating. So none of us, none, you know, none of us want to be beat like that. None of us wants a, a whooping. So it's telling us that no chastening for the present time seemeth to be joyous, but it's all grievous. Nevertheless, after it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them who are exercised thereby. Meaning it's going to make you better if you allow God's chastening. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed follow peace with all men and holiness uprightness righteousness without no man shall see the Lord Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message. God, I thank you, Lord, that in understanding that salvation is a growth process, and this is a growth message. Father God, this message isn't for those that don't want to go the extra step to get closer to you, but this message is for those, Father God, that want to forsake the world and find their true purpose in you. Get closer to you, God, so that we don't have to fear Whatever they're saying in the news, whatever they're saying on the internet, whatever they're threatening, this, whatever they're doing, whatever's behind it all, every disease, sickness, whatever's floating around, whatever's attacking bodies, we don't have to fear if we get close enough to you. But Father God, we know if we live uprightly before you, there is a confidence and a boldness that comes up on us where we know you are our protector. We know what you've spoken about us. We know who you are to us. We understand, Father God, that you will protect us from any sickness and disease. So help us, Father God, to keep your statutes, to keep your commands. Father God, to hear your voice and to walk uprightly before you. And we'll give you praise, glory, and honor. And God, it's not just during this crisis, but let us build a true relationship that grows roots to keep us steady like that tree planted by the rivers of water that will not be moved. Even when this goes away, even when things get better, when we can go out of our house, when we can go back to life somewhat normal or like it used to be in some way, we won't forget about you. But we will hold fast to every promise we made during this time. In Jesus' name. Amen.